All right, I know that uh, me along with a couple of other speakers is what stands between everyone here in cocktail hour, so I'm going to try to uh, stick to my 20 or 25 minutes as much as possible. Happy to follow up um, with anyone um, during cocktails or dinner or offline if what I'm talking about uh, is of interest to you. Um, how many people in the room are, in, are tasked with doing some form of social media monitoring? or extracting some insights out of social media. So this is something that's coming very common within industry now. You know, go through the Fortune 100 companies, almost everyone's using it. If you look at the political campaigns, in this last cycle, they were getting daily reports based on social media conversations. The US Census Bureau has built out a social media war room to try to understand um, some of the issues that they are having with regards to turnout. And so we've all constructed dashboards along these lines. And these dashboards are good because they bring in a lot of the data that we have that we want to try to process, but they also create some problems for us. So just to highlight a couple of, of issues that you might have dealing with a dashboard like this. If we look across the top, we can slice it by different time periods. Do I want to look at what's happening today in the last 24 hours? Do I want to look at one week, one month, one quarter? Each time I pull up a different report, I'm getting a different feed of data. If I look at a given venue, let's say I focus on Twitter, well, which metric am I supposed to look at? Do I look at volume? Do I look at valence? Do I look at how much variation there is? If Twitter didn't present enough issues for us, now we've got to look across different venues. What's happening on Facebook? I think it was talked about earlier this morning from folks from IDEO had said, we can listen in on what people are talking about on Facebook. Uh, Jerry Tellis had talked about listening in on some of what's happening on Amazon and ePinions. Other research came out at HP Labs said that we can listen in on Twitter to understand what's happening. Well, each forum that, or each type of venue that we choose to listen to has a different set of metrics. And sometimes we get consistent results. Other times we get results that are going in different directions. So what does this lead to? If you're the person tasked with pr trying to integrate all of this data and extract a clean story from it. Uh, probably something that looks like that. You know, we've heard stories of people saying, I get half a dozen reports on my desk for social media every week. None of them tell me what to do with them. And that's one of the challenges we have, where as much as big data is this nice thought of for a solution, it's not giving us insights directly. We've got to take that data somehow and process it and extract the insights that we can actually turn into action. All right, so this is what I'm presenting here today is going to be one piece of wor um, joint work with my collaborator, Wendy Mo uh, from the University of Maryland. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the middle block, but um, just to kind of touch on the other pieces for those of you who are interested, we've done some work looking at the question of what is it that people are talking about with regards to sentiment, kind of mirrors some of um, the findings that Duncan had mentioned uh, earlier, that there are those hardcore activists that kind of dominate the conversation, systematically different from every everyone else that's participating. Another piece of the, of the puzzle, um, asking the who question. Who are these influencers? How can we identify them? How can we target them? That's work with Wendy and her doctoral student, uh, Yuqi Zhang. Uh, anyone that is interested in these, um, in the fall, we try to tie all of this together um, in a book called Social Media Intelligence that's going to be coming out. But for in the 20 minutes that I've got or so, let's just focus on this question of where do people choose to post? All right, so let's take any, co any context that we can think of as far as an experience with a restaurant, an experience with a movie, an experience with a particular product. I have that experience. I want to talk about it. Do I go to Twitter? Do I go to a blog? Do I go to a discussion forum? Well, turns out that we can go to any of them. No one's forcing us to go to any particular venue. But the, the decision of where I post and what I choose to talk about, those two pieces might be related to each other. All right, so if we take a look at Twitter, I won't hold it against Christian. He mentioned earlier him, him and his best friend uh, Bieber. That's what people are talking about on Twitter. You know, so people, Justin Bieber's tweeting and all his fans are listening. Um, you know, from the Colbert report, there was um, a discussion out of the political conventions where Colbert went and interviewed newscasters who had reported as news that Michelle Obama had twice as many tweets per minute after her convention speech compared to Mitt Romney. What does that mean? That was the question he was asking. What does it mean that we have this metric saying twice as much for Michelle Obama compared to Romney? Newscaster response, uh, I don't know. But we reported it as if it were news. Um, if we look at volume of mentions on Twitter, we can see things. This is a search for Tiger Woods from a couple of years ago. Uh, first spike was breaking news that Tiger had crashed into a telephone pole or fire hydrant, something along those lines. Second spike was that he was taking a break from golf. 
So we can just look at these surface measures, these kind of aggregated level measures, and get a sense for what is it that people are searching for, what is it that there's a lot of conversation about. But can we link that up to the metrics that actually matter to a company? You know, can we link it up to stock price? Can we link it up with brand tracking studies? So that's what this research um, was aimed at trying to do. So if we kind of look at this framework of the different decisions that make up an individual's choice to engage in social media, well, a lot, there are a couple of decisions that are in here. First of all, am I going to engage in social media? Do I post yes or no? The people who are very active on social media, very different from those people who choose to be less active on social media. So the do, you post, do I post decision related to the question of what am I going to post? Um, in this piece, I'm going to focus on this other link, the relationship between what I post in regards to the sentiment and in regards to the content of the message itself, the product attributes that I'm, that I'm going to choose to talk about, and where do I choose to post it. If we just think about the structural differences that exist among different social media platforms, Twitter is 140 characters. Blog posts tend to be very lengthy. So if you, if you really have a lot to say, if you want to go into that in-depth discussion, you're not going to try to do that on Twitter. You don't have the space to do it. If you really care, you might create a blog post. Someone who's going to be a little bit more casual about the post might say, okay, 140 characters, that's pretty much all I need to say. This product was great. I can't launch into a detailed comparison of, well, this product was good on dimension A, but not so good on dimension B, and here are where the shortcomings are. So just the nature of the platforms themselves lend themselves to seeing differences in terms of what people are going to be talking about. Another aspect related to that is going to be the nature of the dynamics in play. You, know, you participate in a discussion forum. You're expecting this back and forth dialogue with other participants in the forums. Well, if you're posting on a blog, not all blogs are going to be set up to allow for that back and forth commentary. So again, the, just the nature of those platforms, reason to believe that we're going to see variation in terms of what people talk about related to where they choose to have those conversations. So, We've, we've gotten data from a social media monitoring firm, Conversion. And what we've looked at, this is data from a B2B software provider. So think of kind of the um, uh, like uh, screen sharing type software applications. And what we've looked at was let's just break down the data and see where are people saying positive things. So the top graph is the fra uh, fraction of uh, positive, uh, or fr based on the venue that they're participating in in each month, we're seeing that in some months, we see more posts coming out of forums. In other months, more posts coming out of Twitter. The bottom graph tries to get at looking at sentiment across these different platforms. And what we're seeing is, well, one, it's a little bit messy, but also that not all of these venues move in the same direction. Sometimes forums have high sentiment, Twitter's got lower sentiment. Sometimes blogs have low sentiment, meanwhile, Twitter's got a higher sentiment. So we're trying to come up with a way of pooling all of this information together to extract some, uh, to some measure of sentiment. All right, so what might lead to kind of how sentiment is moving over time? All right, well, one source of variation that, we've got, that we've, I've talked about already saying, venue, where you choose to post, some venues may be systematically more positive than others. So we're gonna control for that. Uh, we've also got to control for the fact that the content of the message, what people are talking about, may lead to variation. Maybe I love the brand overall, but their value proposition isn't very good, or their price is too high, or I had trouble installing the software. Depending on the focus of the message, I might see variation in sentiment related to that. We want to take that into account. We're also going to allow for uh, temporal variation or shocks that are specific to a particular venue. Well, this if we just stopped here, we're saying all of these venues are unique to each other. There's no common thread. The hope that we had had was if we look at across all of these different types of venues, account for the variation that we know is going to exist, can we identify what we, we refer to as the general brand impression? A common factor that cuts across all venues. That, it's, that general brand impression, it affects what the sentiment expressed on Twitter, on Facebook, um, on the discussion forums, on the blogs. And that's the measure that we want to extract. Everything else, it's systematic variation. Uh, we know it exists. We want to pull that out and try to capture that general brand impression. So there's an ugly looking mathematical model. I'll spare everyone the Greek. Uh, but here's the overview of the analysis. We're going to model venue choice itself based on the content of the message, what's the attribute, attributes being discussed and the products, as well as this measure of general brand impression. 
We're also simultaneously going to model sentiment as a function of the venue, the message content itself, again, that general brand impression. When we, do the, when we go through the simultaneous model, we're able to extract this measure of general brand sentiment uh, or the general brand impression. It's the dark line uh, that's up there. And we see in some cases it moves consistently with the sentiment expressed in a particular venue. But in other cases it deviates, particularly in this part of the plot here where we see some of the venues remaining flat, other venues see a, a slight increase. We see a sharp increase in our measure of general brand impression. Well, well, all right, well this is nice, but how do we know that we're actually capturing anything related to brand sentiment? You know, how do we know that this is anything meaningful? Right. Well, we looked at two different measures. One measure was an offline brand tracking study. We said the company had conducted a brand tracking study every month, said so let's put that in a black box, let's not even look at it. Came up with our, our measure of general brand impression just using the social media data. So just by doing the sentiment analysis, came up with our general brand impression measure, and then compared it to the brand tracking study. Turns out that they don't correlate well if you look at them contemporaneously, but the, the measure of general brand impression as a leading indicator of changes in sentiment uh, comes out pretty high. Uh, you know, we see that the contemporaneous effect correlation with the GBI, 0.376, not all that high. When we treat it as a leading indicator, 0.881. Microblogs, Twitter essentially, fairly strong correlation there as well. So some validity for the fact that we are capturing something related to strength of the brand. So nice measure for a reality check for us. Another reality check for us was, let's compare this to stock price movements. Uh, this was a simulation-based process, so we compared this iteration by iteration within the simulation. In 99% of our simulations, uh, we get a significant coefficient for our GBI measure being a leading indicator of changes in the stock price movement. We've done this across two different data sets, uh, similar findings in the other data set as well. All right, so what does this have to do with selective listening? Well, there are kind of two dominant approaches right now as far as social media listening. One approach says, let's just listen to individual or selective venues. Let's just listen to Twitter. Let's just look at Facebook. Other extreme says, well, let's just average everything together. Let's just throw it all together. Neither of those approaches pulls out the pieces that we know exist. We know that there's variation across venue. We know that there's venue-specific shocks. You know, we know that message matters in terms of what people are talking about. So what if we were to go to one extreme and say, you know, let's only listen to individual venues. How bad is that for us? Well, this was an index that we had created where the column going down the side tells us what venues we're listening to, and then in each row we have um, compared to the actual data. If we were only to listen to a particular venue, are we going to systematically overestimate the proportion of comments mentioning a particular topic, or are we going to systematically underestimate the proportion of comments? When we listen to just individual venues, the bias that we get is relatively large. That's the most problematic for us. When we start listening to two venues, those bias, that bias gets a bit smaller. We start listening to three venues, relatively low bias. So it's not just that you're going to get different sentiment based on what you listen to, but when you draw the inference of what do people care about, wh what are they talking about, that's also going to be affected by where you do your social media listening. So all, you know, it's not just a matter of saying do they like us, do they not like us, but what's important to our consumers. If, if, we're, if you're trying to use social media as a marketing intelligence tool, we need to take into account those systematic venue differences. Um, you know, I think just to kind of summarize and leave a couple of minutes for questions, yes, there is um, a way to use so, uh, social media as a marketing intelligence tool, as a marketing research tool, but we've got to take into account those factors that we know are going to cause differences. Otherwise, we do get those systematic biases. You know, at the, very, at the very least, what we should be doing in those dashboards, trying to pull out those differences, not just overloading decision makers with data, but trying to come up with these integrated measures that take into account all the data that's out there, come up with digestible numbers, and then importantly, link them to the measures that we care about. You know, we looked at stock price, we looked at the brand tracking survey, but the other key performance indicators, whether it's engagement, website hits, you know, those measures should be integrated into the dashboard, and we should be looking at that driver analysis. So I think that leaves me time for one or two questions. Right. You know, 
Absolutely. You know, it, it's that it's a B2B purchase, you know, different from a B2C context. I think context is going to matter. Uh, the other data set that we had looked at, um, I believe that we, that we had access to the stock price data on, I think was financial services. Um, no, it was telecom we had the stock price data on. Financial services, the company went bankrupt. Um, so, we, so we had the telecom data. We also saw it as a leading indicator of the stock price. So the exact nature of the biases, I think not only domain specific, but also um, company specific. Um, but I think you know, the idea of selective listening being potentially problematic and this GBI, the general brand impression, being a leading indicator, we had found support in both of the domains for that. Yeah, you know, um, I'm, I try to stay away from anything causal with a 100-foot pole. Um, yeah, you know, it's, we're trying to draw these inferences from um, the social media data that's out there. We're not gonna be able to make any claims as far as what's causing what I think of it as a joint decision that's being made. Um, the model itself is essentially a conditional probability model, um, but I, I think of these decisions as being related to each other. Not gonna try to say one's causing the other. We've tried to test alternative specifications that do make a, a kind of a more causal assumptions. Um, we, those alternative specifications fit worse. Um, I'm, I, I'm honestly not that surprised that they're fitting worse because in some sense they're more restrictive than the joint analysis. All right, thank you.